right. Hello, React Rally. Hello, Salt Lake City. How's everybody doing this afternoon? We're making it. We're almost to the end. This is so awesome. Uh, my name is Eve Porcello. You can find me at Eve Porcello on all of the things. I live in Tahoe City, California, where a good beer is about 8% alcohol. And I came here to Salt Lake City, <laughs> where I was told a good beer is about 3.2% alcohol. So typically the night before a talk, I like to have a few drinks, kind of calm my nerves down. I get a little anxious. So I wasn't sure how this would work in Salt Lake City. So what I did was I wrote a function. <laughs> how much should I drink takes in the number of drinks I typically have. It takes into consideration whether I'm in Salt Lake City and how many talks I have tomorrow. So I crunched the numbers and I found out that I should have 11 drinks. <laughs> which seems high. <laughs> um, but JavaScript functions are never wrong, so I went with it. Um, I had a few drinks at the after party last night. It was pretty low key at the beginning. Um, and things, you know, just kind of escalated from there. Uh, things got a little blurrier. <laughs> I lost focus. Um, <laughs> until finally I found myself at a tattoo shop. <laughs> at first they told me that I was too drunk, I shouldn't get a tattoo. Um, but I got to talking about GraphQL and <laughs> they seemed interested. Um, so long story short, I got a tattoo. Um, <laughs> this tattoo, GraphQL, it's everything we need to get started with GraphQL on the client side, Yarn, Add, React, Apollo. Apollo Boost, and GraphQL. So, so I got a tattoo, and it's probably fine. Because um, writing things down is kind of what I do. I wrote this book, Learning React, with Alex Banks, and then we together wrote Graph Learning GraphQL, which is coming out a little bit later this month. And GraphQL is what I'm here to talk to you about today. GraphQL is a query language for your API, which means that you get to query or ask for the data that you need. Um, and this makes me think about how we get data into our applications today. So with REST, we have a multitude of different endpoints, and we have to make multiple requests to all of those endpoints to collect information about different types. With GraphQL, we only have one endpoint. So we make one request and we get one response. So how do we specify the data that we need from a GraphQL endpoint? Well, we're gonna write a query. Now a query specifies all of the fields that I'd like to get back from our GraphQL endpoint and then that data is returned back to me as JSON. So what's the problem with loading all of these resources? Latency, it takes a while, right? We have to wait for all of these HTTP requests to be sent and received. And then now we have four different JSON files on our phone that we have to parse, sort, connect, filter, et cetera, to turn it into the shape that we need. And this makes our phone super sad. In, with GraphQL, we only have the one endpoint. So we can move a lot of that calculation, a lot of that logic to the server. So all of our filtering, sorting, everything is gonna happen back there. It delivers a nicely shaped object that we can just load directly into our client. And our client is stoked. So GraphQL isn't just for phones. I'm just talking about that because the client that is the most painful for most of us is a phone. All right. So that's it. Um, there's not a lot of huge differences between GraphQL and REST. Um, I would just say that instead of all of these different endpoints, we're just going to make the one request and get the one response. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, just like air conditioning is better than fans, GraphQL is better than REST. <laughs> now, I know somebody's gonna come up to me after this talk and say, <laughs> 
You know what, young lady? You fail to understand fans and the history of fans. And actually, fans can get you cooler in some situations. And I'm not just going to tear down all the fans I already have. And to that, I would say, fine. But Phoenix wasn't built on fans. <laughs> and GraphQL is better than REST, so we might as well make our clients happy and have them cool down. So how do I actually learn this? Well, when I started to learn GraphQL, I thought I should learn it like I learned JavaScript back in the day, and that was to learn vanilla GraphQL. And then I looked into it, and I realized that vanilla GraphQL isn't really a thing. So uh, there are many different implementations of GraphQL, but you're going to have to ultimately choose from one, because GraphQL is just a spec. And if you don't choose from one, then you're just going to end up building your own GraphQL framework. So if you don't have time for that, you can use one of the many that exist, GraphQL.js, Apollo Server. On the client side, we have Relay and Urkel. Shout out Ken Wheeler. Um, and we also have Apollo. So Apollo is what I'm here to talk to you about today, specifically React Apollo. So React Apollo gives us all of um, everything we need to get data from a GraphQL endpoint, and we're going to get it using these components. So what I would like to do, just as I did yesterday, is a little demo. So I want us, when we leave React Rally, if you haven't worked with an Apollo client before, to really get into using these components. So let's do it. The first place I want to start is let's go ahead and Get your phone out. So if everybody wants to go to graphql.fun, because GraphQL is fun, obviously. Um, let's go ahead and pull up graphql.fun on your phone. And we're seeing some folks starting to connect. Now, is it a good idea to get a tattoo last night? Probably not. Is it a good idea to run a demo over conference Wi-Fi? Perhaps not. However, people are connecting. Uh, this is going pretty well. Awesome. So we have some folks connecting. Again, it's graphql.fun, no .com in the mix. So as people are connecting, oh, I also wanted to say a little caveat here. I'm not going to steal your data. <laughs> um, you're going to log in with GitHub here, but I'm not going to save anything into a database because there is no database. We're saving everything in memory. We got one free Heroku Dino going. so. It's happening. All right, so now that folks are starting to connect, we have our playground up. So this is GraphQL Playground. And GraphQL Playground allows you to test your GraphQL API by writing all of your queries. So a couple things to point out here with GraphQL Playground. You see the GraphQL fun slash GraphQL. That is our GraphQL endpoint. Over here on the left-hand side is where we would write our query. We're going to get our response as JSON in the right-hand panel. And then what's really awesome about GraphQL is that through introspection, all of our servers are going to provide to us a list of all of the queries, mutations, et cetera, that are available on this API. So let's see how many people are connected by running a query for player count. So as soon as I hit play on that, we should see 155 are connected. We've never tested it with more than five. So um, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> buckle up. Um, we're going to uh, also take a look at our schema over here. The all players query is going to return data about players. So with introspection, again, we see all of the different fields that are available on that type. So what I want to do is let's run an all players query. And we're going to look for the login, the name, and the avatar for each of these people. So as soon as I hit play, uh, we see that people are starting to connect. And we see names that we might recognize. So I'm not making it up. Everyone knows who David is, Brandon? Not fake data. Um, cool. Alex Banks, cool. Uh, awesome. So we're able to query all of that information. So the next step I want to take is, now that we understand how to run these queries in the playground, I also want to connect this to um, an actual client. So let's go ahead and copy this. We're going to copy our query for later. I also want to 
install all of our dependencies. So I need to install everything I need to work with Apollo client. Oh, uh, yarn add, <laughs> React Apollo, Apollo boost, and GraphQL. So I'm not really gonna do that, I've installed it already. I'm instead just gonna run yarn start. We're gonna be okay with this running on a different port. And cool, we see our code window pop up and we're just using create react app to get started here. So nothing too special going on. Uh, let's go ahead and get started by setting up our application with React Apollo. The first thing I'll need is Apollo Provider. Now Apollo Provider is gonna come from React Apollo and we're going to, just as Kent was talking about, we're going to use the provider to pass down data from our API to our app. So we're gonna place the app component inside of the provider. All right, and that error is okay because we need to make sure that we pass the client in. So let's go ahead and pull this from Apollo Boost. And we're gonna create our instance of this client. So we'll say const client equals new Apollo client. And all we need to get started with this is the uh, URI. So we're going to use the same thing that we saw in GraphQL Playground. I'm literally gonna copy and paste it. Uh, we just need that URL for our GraphQL endpoint. Next, we'll pass in the client to the provider, and we'll hit save. And isn't that awesome? No, nothing happened, but we're gonna connect this to the actual data in just one second. So let's do that over in the app file. So let's open up app.js. We're going to delete all of our app for now. We'll get rid of our spinning logo. And let's go ahead and create an app here. Now this is the first time that we're gonna be using one of these React Apollo um, query mutation or subscription components. So let's pull this in from React Apollo. And we're gonna take that query from the playground that I copied and then copied over, um, and we're going to set this up here. So we're going to say const all players query, and we're going to use this function called GQL. GQL is going to take our query string and it's going to turn it into an abstract syntax tree, because that'll make it a lot easier to parse. So let's make sure that we're also importing GQL from Apollo Boost. And then finally, we want to make sure that we pass query as a property to the query component, all players query. And here's where things start to get interesting in our app. So what we wanna do here is we want to handle uh, this loading state. So whenever we're waiting for some data to load, we have to wait for it. Even if it takes a couple seconds, we're still going to need to account for that loading state. So what I wanna do is let's go ahead and add this H1, and we're going to say that if our data is loading, then we want to say yeah, otherwise we'll say no. So did you see the flicker? I guess this ethernet is too fast but I didn't want to chance it. Um, it says, yeah, no, um, we need to deal with that loading state so that until our data is ready, until it's delivered to us from our GraphQL service, we need to wait. But here's where things get more fun. Uh, that's when we actually load the data. So let's replace our H1 with the following. So we're just gonna add a div here, and we'll say, is it loading? and then we'll map over all of those players. Remember, all of the data being returned from our GraphQL endpoint is just JSON, right? So we can just map over it. Um, and we're gonna say P, and for each of the players, we're going to add an image. So I'm going to pull your GitHub image and display it. It's happening. <laughs> and, 
That was part of my warning spiel and I forgot to say it. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and add the whip here. Cool. That's awesome. So, so using the query component, we can connect to this live data and we're going to be able to map over all of these and return all of these images. So pretty excited that that didn't break Google Chrome. Um, let's go ahead and talk about how we would change data. So we've gotten some data, let's go ahead and change some. So in our playground, I'm gonna write a mutation. And my mutation is gonna be called create teams. Now the create teams mutation is going to uh, do the following. So we're gonna break up these folks into teams. Let me see how many are up there, 190. So I'm gonna break you into teams of 20. And we'll get your color, and you could also grab the player information as well if you are so inclined. So when I hit play, we should see all of the colors returned as JSON. And then if I scroll over, we don't see anything um, until we hit refresh. Um, and until we add our border. So let's do that first. <laughs> That I meant to do that. So let's go ahead and add a style to our border. The style we wanna add here is, uh, let's do the following. So we'll say, if there's a p.team, then we want to add a border radius of 50%. We also want to make sure that we have our color being outlined so we don't freak out in front of 190 people. Um, so we're gonna add a border and four pixels, solid. Four pixels, solid. And then we'll pull that color from p.team.color.name. Now I also need to make sure that this is reflected in the query. So this isn't gonna work until I add team, color, and name to that query. So now that we should, yeah, awesome. So now we see everybody has been grouped into these different colors, and that's pretty rad. I'm glad that that worked. <laughs> um, cool, so the next step I wanna take here is let's add a mutation. So we're going to take our mutation from Playground. We're going to, again, use GQL. And GQL is, again, that function that's going to take our query and turn it into an AST. The next step is I need to use the mutation component. So let's import it from React Apollo. Let's also be sure to add a button to handle this. So let's go ahead and do that first. Um, we'll say, let's see, button, and we'll say create teams. Exclamation part mark at the end and we'll say div, and then we'll close our other div. All right, so we see our create teams button there. This is where we're gonna wrap this with the mutation. So one second and this will work. Um, we're going to wrap the button in the mutation component to actually trigger this mutation. The way that this will work is we'll pass the mutation property once again, create teams mutation. And then we're going to add an on click using render props. So let's do this. We're gonna say create teams returns the button. And then each time we click on the button, we should send that mutation. 
The final thing I want to do here is I want to make sure that I have a poll interval set up on my query. This is going to make it so that I don't have to re refresh the page. So let's see how it goes. We're going to say create teams. Yeah, it works. Did you see? Let's look at the upper right hand, the left hand corner. So we trust me. Everyone's like, no, you didn't. It didn't work. See? <laughs> so the upper left hand corner, it's going to actually change that using the poll interval and the mutation. All right. So we've made it. We've used the query component. We've used the mutation component. Now's the time where I'm going to warn you properly that if you don't want the possibility of coming up on this stage to be part of your future, you should log out of the app right now. Um, because I'm going to start a game. So here's what I'm going to do. In Whoa. I'll wait. Yeah, you can head out if you want. So I'm going to go over to here. Let's make sure that we have some proper music. So I have 10 hours of this in case. Jesse Weigel, come on down. Horace Lugo, come on down. And you can just come onto the stage. Tyler Peake, are you here? Let's go. Beth Gilliman. Brandon, very mysterious, Brandon. Make right. sure you have your phone with you. I should have said that. Don't forget that phone. If you watch that for long enough, some of the dancing is truly spectacular. So I'm going to start the game. And I want everybody on stage to stand under your picture. So everyone in the audience, I'll get to you in a second. But it's very bright. Someone must be online. That's OK. So here's what I'd like you to do. Bass, let's go. Hit that button. drums works for a remote person. If it doesn't, that's not part of our requirements. <laughs> nice. So our band, sorry, our band is working over a GraphQL subscription. So you can go toggle that off for a second. Yeah. So everybody can turn theirs off for a second. I'm not going to let you leave yet. Um, everybody in the audience, you see your heads bobbing across. I mentioned before that GraphQL is the same. It's just HTTP requests and responses. But we're actually using GraphQL subscriptions now. And this is our final component that we haven't talked about. This is our final component that we haven't talked about. <laughs> Guess what I can do? Um, <laughs> um, cool. So the GraphQL subscription is working in real time over WebSockets. And this is what a, sub a subscription component would look like. Um, we can check these things out in our playground as well. So if I go to a new tab, People behind me are like, this is getting long. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the game change subscription. And we're going to say playing music instrument. OK, cool. So this looks a lot like our query and mutation from before. Here's the difference. As soon as I hit play, it's listening for any data changes. So 
Yeah, drums is on it. Um, if, anybody, <laughs> if anybody else wants to start, yeah, we see all of this data being updated in real time. So that's how the subscription is working in the app. And this is another really awesome feature of GraphQL, and the integration with React Apollo makes it even better. All right, so with all of that being said, um, I encourage you to play around and build nonsensical apps with uh, GraphQL and Apollo. I'm gonna bring up my board once more. <laughs> All right, let's take it out. Let's everybody play again. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> no audio. Try again. Why would I try it one more time <laughs> when everything was working so well? Okay, cool. So GraphQL is awesome. I encourage you to play around with it more. I thank you so much, React Rally, for having me here. Again, my name is Eve Porcello. You can find all my slides, and I would love to talk to you about GraphQL in the hallway or at the after party. Thanks again. <laughs>